They lost, dude. They lost. They lost to the worst team in the NHL. The Vancouver Canucks just lost to the San Jose Sharks in regulation. Revenge for the 10 to 1 game. Now, I told y'all I'm not at home. I am at a party right now. I pre recorded today and tomorrow's worth of videos because I'm not going to be by my computer and my microphone. So I am just here. At a party, we're chilling. I had a few drinks. It's feeling good, but I almost inhaled my own saliva there. Excuse me. The Vancouver Canucks lose, and they lose in such an interesting fashion to San Jose of all teams because, hey, the Canucks actually started out pretty well. They had themselves the goal, the opening goal. Sam Lafferty continuing his hot streak from yesterday. The bottom six guys coming to contribute. Of course, Lafferty's playing on the top line, but you know there's a difference there. Mikheyev in front of Lafferty, it's a goal, it's crazy, one nothing. Yeah, Lafferty belongs in this first line. Andre Kuzmenko, who's that? But it doesn't stand. Goal gets removed. It is goaltender interference, and then shortly after, the San Jose Sharks, they strike. Good on Ty Emerson for getting his first NHL goal. What was the thing that they said on the broadcast? Like, four San Jose Sharks defensemen of all time have gotten their first NHL goals against Vancouver. Like, what an interesting and weird stat to throw out there for the San Jose Sportsnet crew. Not Sportsnet. What is it? NBC Sports crew. That's what it is. I'm sorry. I didn't watch the Sportsnet broadcast because I'm not even in Canada right now. But one nothing is the score for San Jose. Then... Later on, it becomes 1-1. The Vancouver Canucks are able to get themselves on the board. It is Philip Horonic with the one-time drive. He's able to get a bye. Capo Kakinen assisted there by JT Miller and Quinn Hughes. So there you go. Miller, Hughes getting back up on the board. We had talked the other night, yesterday actually, about how Quinn Hughes' NHL point scoring lead was gone because Nikita Kucherov decided to pop off against Carolina and get six points in the game, but he is still in second. He takes over as number two with the assist on this heroic goal. It is a really nice play where Hughes goes over to Miller. Miller goes to the Ovechkin spot, and that is where Heronic is. He hammers it right by making it 1-1. Second period comes along, and this is where my memory starts to get a little bit hazy. I'm gonna try to piece things together. You know what? I actually don't really remember too much about the um, San Jose goals themselves. I do recognize the Canucks goals. Brock Besser had two in this game. There you go. He had the one at the very end of the game. He had the one in the second period. Besser has cemented himself with 15 goals on the year to what is it? Second? Or no, tied for first in the NHL in goals once again. So good on Brock for getting back up on the board. Miller ended up getting three assists in this one as well. He assisted on both of those Brock Besser goals. So that, of course, is what we like to see as well. Elias Pettersson also got involved in the action, scoring himself an assist. But the Vancouver Canucks actually losing and finding a way to escape this game with an L is one of the weirdest things that I think we could have expected out of this team, especially considering how they started out, you know? Considering how they were so dominant and so let's just say controlling in each of the games they had. But in this San Jose game, I don't want to make it seem like the Sharks had their way, but the Sharks were opportunistic. They had power play advantages at the start of the third. They scored two quick goals. Casey DeSmith was not able to stop these. Of course, you want to see the Vancouver Canucks step up for their goaltender and give a big supporting cast of a showcase in order to make it easier for the goalie. But nah, Three goals is all they're able to manage. One goal in the last few minutes of the game. I'll admit, Canucks looked good on the six on five. They looked really good in the final few minutes of this game when they had the empty net and they were pressing. And my question to all the Canucks when watching that segment, I was like, wait a minute, where was this fight for the majority of the game? Like, how were you guys not able to get this done earlier when you were controlling the puck, having so much poise, having so many great shots? Like, Sure, you don't want to see JT Miller missing the open net by shooting the puck way up into the sky and out into outer space with like 20 seconds left. You prefer not to see that. But the exaggerated type of emotion that was on display, the puck control, the movement, the chances, they were all there, especially in the last few minutes. So like, 
when the Vancouver Canucks look really good in that spin, that specific instance, you're like, okay, we know they're good enough to like really take over. But for the most, the majority of this game, I'm slurring my words. Oh boy, the alcohol is taking a buzz on me today, eh? For the majority of this game, is just not completing their passes, not getting pucks on the goal. I mean, look, Capo Kakadin made a few really nice saves. I definitely won't discredit that. Even yesterday, you could say Brock Besser had a really good amount of chances in yesterday's game. Of course, today he scores the two goals. So, of course, he's going out there and making himself a worthwhile player on this team. But holistically, my gosh, the Vancouver Canucks could have been, what, third in the NHL had they won today because the LA Kings actually tied Vancouver today and they have a lot of games in hand. So... Vancouver could have catapulted themselves up. They could have secured that third overall spot or fourth overall or whatever it is. But instead, they lose to the worst team in the NHL. And they lose in a fashion where it's like, yeah, you were down 4-2. Like, halfway throughout that third period. You were in a really bad position near the end there. And you weren't able to claw out and get the victory. I will say, there were a few interesting things that I thought made themselves known with the score and everything because as we had said JT Miller had three assists so now he's actually tied with Quinn Hughes I think for second in the NHL in points with 33. Hughes was at 32 I think he got the one assist and he gets up there Miller had three assists in this one so he gets himself right behind Nikita Kucherov as well um, as we had said, Brock Besser, he is the goal guy. Elias Pettersson finally gets an assist once again. Philip Hronik with his second on the year, another one-time bomb. This guy is so good. This guy's like a forward, just playing on defense with the way he's able to slug the puck on net. It is awesome. But at the end of the day, I mean, Vancouver losing to the San Jose freaking Sharks, that's not good. Oh, man, I, uh, I don't know... What else there is to say about that? I'm not going to lie. Like, for the majority of the first period, I actually was listening to the game on one AirPod, just kind of going around, you know, talking to people, like eating some food, doing whatever, because, you know, I don't want to, like, disrespect everybody that's over here completely by giving my undivided attention to a hockey game. But I did try to multitask, you know, had the AirPod in, doing the thing, and then later on, you know, some more people here wanted to watch the game so I tossed it up on my laptop and we watched a little bit of it just kind of passing through you know doing some stuff people are watching people are talking people are doing whatever and I'm kind of going in between so I'm not gonna lie I didn't really sit down and watch the majority of this game as intricately as I have for other games but at the end of the day they lost against the San Jose Sharks like what can you say what can you say about that I mean I know yesterday they came out of the second period in a really tight spot, and they won, and they looked really convincing in that third period, but that shutdown capability that we saw in that Seattle game yesterday wasn't present here today. And oh, you could say, Lego, they're in the back-to-back -back situation. They played Seattle yesterday, they're playing San Jose today. San Jose was also in a back-to-back. -back. They lost to Montreal yesterday, and it was arguably more embarrassing than the Canucks lost today, because yesterday the Sharks were up 2-0 against the Habs, then they blew it and lost in a shootout. Yes, see Lonan going out there and doing fantastic things. The Montreal Canadiens beat the Sharks, dude. And the Canucks, they lose in regulation. Come on, man. Come on. Like, okay, hopefully the Canucks are able to actually bounce back because their schedule is supposed to get better. But this past few weeks worth of hockey has not been good. Like, a lot of back-to-backs, a lot of inconsistent games. Sure, they're winning some. Sure, they're getting points. But... Just the quality of play, you could tell that there's something a little bit off with the way this team is approaching their strategies. But either way, I mean, I got to go back down. I'm kind of sad sitting here talking about the Vancouver Canucks being bad. So I want to recharge my social battery by maybe, I don't know, maybe taking some more alcohol. No, just kidding. I didn't even really drink that much. But um, yeah, the Vancouver Canucks lost. Let me know your thoughts. In the comment section below, I hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to Shrolson 99. I'm in a isolated bedroom here in a Philadelphia Flyers sweater because I like wearing orange. Also, peep the Freddy Krueger socks. Got to get that in there, yeah. And bye.